communications director of the New Patriotic Party has described as legal the mining concessions of the Ashanti regional chairman of the party, a leak tape making waves on social media purportedly recorded by the embattled central regional vice chairman of the NPP mentioned Chairman Enfibuesiako as having been engaged in small-scale mining. Yabuabinga Samoa says the mining Wuntumi is engaged in cannot be illegal mining. It is important that we appreciate and realize that, yes, a grave matter has happened. But that grave matter happened because Prof. Safrimpon Boati himself raised it. It was not as if somebody else raised it for him. So Prof. Safrimpon Boati's integrity, as far as that difficult office is concerned, to me, is intact. Now, the question is, what do you do once the matter he raised has come up? As we speak, the excavators, or some of the excavators, I can't tell the exact numbers, have been found. And beyond that, people have been arrested. I have seen that tip. I don't think Frimpon Boatin said anything out of the ordinary. The areas where illegal mining was most endemic are areas where we don't doubt the MPP strongholds. Are they not? These are areas where the vote tends to be higher for the NDC, uh, MPP. To the extent that MPP activists are also entitled Eh, to participate in legal mining. Read my lips. They are also entitled to participate in what? Legal community mining. Then there is absolutely nothing wrong with Frimpon Boatin facilitating community mining options for those people. And I heard on that tape distinctly from Paul Boatin saying that, go and find out from the Ashanti Regional Chairman's concession. Am I correct? The word concession was used. A concession is a legal authority, legal license to access mining lands. And therefore, wouldn't miss concessions are legal. Including John Bordu? No, John Bordu hasn't done anything. John Bordu had a discussion to facilitate access for, and that is where it ended. And that's the bobbing of the NPP. But I'm in the studio with Edward Okuoku. He is a director of research and policy at the Artisanal and Small Scale Mining Network. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Miriam. How are you? I'm very well. Great. What's your thoughts on um, government's action um, as far as the missing, you know, excavators are concerned? Have they lived up to expectation? Well, I, I think that um, the move by the minister is a step in the right direction. Definitely, this has something that is got to do with criminality, and therefore you need to refer to the right institution to investigate. Right. And so I think that what we will call for is expedition, mm. you know, in the process, and then the report made public for everybody to know. Right. Yeah. And many have questioned the fight and commitment of government, you know. If you look back at when the fight against Galamse started, it was very fierce and was quite, you know, commendable. And then the missing excavators issue set in. Does this cast doubt on the commitment of government to fight Galamse in Ghana? Uh, well, I don't want to believe so. Rather, maybe I want to say that Ghanaians underestimated the problem that government was dealing with. Galamse is a very complex issue. And uh, I think that our expectations were maybe very high. Uh, what I notice is that um, the president actually has good intentions. But I think that government's approach needs to change. In right. fact, with the current approach, which has been the same approach that uh, all governments, NDC, MPP, have been using, we in civil society have said that it won't work. And our solution has always been that Galamse is a national problem, all right, but it requires a district or a local solution. And that is what I'm here to even talk about some more. Without that, there's no way we can fight Galamse. Well, we'll get to that, but we, we also know that some persons have been arrested. Sure. Um, but you would ask, same was done during the fight against you know, Galamse. A lot of people were arrested on the fields. Right. Would the persecution of these persons change anything? 
Well, I think that if you listen to uh, you know the men in charge of this fight, uh, I've heard the PRO of the Ghana Armed Forces sometime actually saying that one of the challenges they have is that we have a very bureaucratic legal system, and at the moment the law allows some of these foreigners to be granted bail, and so they claim that some foreigners have been put before court, they've been granted bail, the process is slow. What it means is that we have a very bureaucratic legal system. But of course, our legal system is such that you can't bulldoze the system. So what I think should be the way forward is that we need to have special. I remember, you know, the uh, former Chief Justice Theodora Wood announcing some, you know, Galapse courts. What I think is that we need to make sure that these courts have the necessary resources to work. Remember, within the business sector, some years back, Ghana as a country used to have challenges. And I remember the investor community used to complain that, look, it was not worth doing business in Ghana because even when you buy land, there's litigation, you go to court, it takes 10, 20 years. Government then set up these fast-track commercial courts right. during the President Kufo era. Mm. And that did the deal. And today, the whole world is hearing Ghana that, look, our investment climate is good. Right. The same thing is what we need to do to the Galamsey sector. Set up specialized Galamsey courts. <laughs> Let these courts have all the resources. Okay. Let them expedite action when it comes to prosecution. Right. So that on the average, we will not have, let's say, a case go beyond two weeks, maximum one month. I was going to ask what now, because the good thing you mentioned the court. Right. Um, in your research work, do you, what did you find out about the current state of persecuting such cases in our courts? It's nothing more than normal. It's, it's just most of them are taking the normal processes. Right. I mean, when you know, I mean, suspects go there, their lawyers fight for them, they get bail, and then lawyers find various means to drag, you know, mm. various technical strategies to drag the cases. And that is what is happening. But I believe that when you have specialized courts, they are time bound. And they sometimes will give the lawyers of the client a look. I'm giving you, let's say, two days. File this document, else I proceed. I'm giving you 24 hours. File this document. And that is what actually speeds up this you process. You think that's the way to go? It's the best way to go. Because, you see, this Galamsey thing is a national problem that we need to confront it head on. Our water bodies are being destroyed. Our forests are being destroyed. And for me, it's a national security issue. Mm. When you have a national security issue on hand, you don't treat it as an ordinary issue. Right. Do you think that concessions should be put on hold? For me, that's not also the solution. In fact, just putting concessions on hold and binding outright like they did. Well, not banning outright, but putting on hold until the mess as it is now is resolved. But how do you put on hold? Because the point is that most of these infractions and most of these, you know, uh, I mean, deforestation and all are not being caused by the legitimized mining companies. That's the honest truth. And so when you put these concessions, those ones that people have acquired legally on hold, you are only destroying jobs. Most of them have workers, they are working, they are paying them, they have families they depend on. You are only destroying legal jobs. You understand? For me, I think the way to go, and we have maintained that the way to go is to give the power to the district chief executives. The major problem I had with the presidential order when the Nadu himself announced that he was putting his job on the line, which I think was an omission on the part of the president was that because he is not everywhere and he's depending on his surrogates, he should have announced further that, look, I am also putting the job of regional ministers and my DCs on the line. Right. You are the ones close to the problem. If you fail, I'll sack you. But one would have thought that there would have been, you know, a collaboration between the president and the and the district at the district level as well. No, if you look at the structure of the interministerial tax force at the moment, so mm. much power is vested in the you know interministerial tax force, and they do virtually everything. Somehow, some way, most DCs are incapacitated because look, I mean, <laughs> the, you have Operation Vanguard headquarters in Obuase, uh, you have some in Takwa. Now there, there's illegal mining going on in Enche, and then somebody has to send a message to them in Takwa. By the time they drive all the way from Takwa to Enche. There are a lot of roadblocks which people suspect all these people are whistleblowers. They inform these guys. By the time they get there, there's nobody. But when you localize the solution, you give the power to the DC and you tell him that, look, once there's a single iota of Galamsey, I'll sack you. The DC and his team has a quick response time. They will be very prompt. They are within the locality. Give these pickups, so many pickups that we see branded, Gallam Store, to the DCs. Give the drones to them. Give the trained officers of these drone pilots to the districts. Let them have a localized team. They can easily respond to these problems and deal with them. And then let them rather, co uh, let the International Tax Force focus on the policy levels. They should focus on quickly developing the community mining. Because you see, the other thing is that if you destroy these, you know, illegal miners and you don't create the alternative for them quickly, 
they will definitely want to go back. So make sure that the community mining concept is working so that those who are interested can go in. Those who are not interested, the other aspect of the alternative livelihood, this palm project and the rest, those who are interested, move them in. And then once you have these options there, then those who will still remain recalcitrant, you can put them before the law court and deal with them. All right, let me just hold your thought because uh, we've been joined online by uh, Alaji Nusa Fusaini. He is a former minister of land. Alaji, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Would you say we still have a fight against Galamse? Well, thank you so very much for having me this afternoon. And to say that we have a very serious fight against Galamse. Very serious fight against Galamse. But it appears that from what is happening currently, we are losing the fight against illegal smoke cream mining. You say we're losing the fight. It means that we're not going anywhere with, uh, with, with, with our fight against Galamse. Exactly. Exactly so. Because the ability what levels of the water, uh, the rivers in the western region are higher. The, uh, in the uh, Chim, Aguakwa, uh, especially in Kibi, uh, uh, Ghana Water Company has to close down treatment plants three months every year. Uh, since 2017 and so it means i mean it gives an indication that something serious is happening in the in the uh, mining areas you see the the temperature levels go up because the miners use the water for the purposes of processing uh, the the uh the goods that the wind from the size and and in processing them the water flows back into the river and increases the turbidity levels and so when you have a river which stability level is not decreasing, is not diminishing, but increasing. It means that something upstream is happening. It could be construction work, it could be mineral, uh, this is uh, illegal mining. But in this case, it's precisely illegal mining activities. Alaji, should we blame government for the missing excavators that were put in the, you know, in the, in, in the safekeeping of the, the police? Yes, we have nobody to blame except government. And in the government, we have to zero down to the Interministerial Tax Force, uh, Ministerial Committee on Illegal Small Scale Mining. And in blaming the committee, we have to hold the chairman of the committee responsible. Because that's a public office. Uh, office. It's, a, it's a, an office of trust. And so when the taxpayer's money has been used to establish an office, and that office funded by the taxpayer's money, and it is in the interest of the taxpayer that this illegal activity stops. And the taxpayer sponsors an amendment into Parliament to make it possible for you to confiscate uh, uh, equipment used in illegal small scale mining. And right. when those equipment are seized, the law provides a procedure for dealing with those equipment. And if the, the, that procedure is breached or not followed, then we hold those who, who we gave authority to responsible for the breaches. What do you think the way forward should be? The way forward is a comprehensive strategic approach to dealing with illegal small scale mining. You recall, my dear sister, that when the president constituted the committee, I said that the committee ought to look at the fight against illegal small scale mining in a multi dimensional stakeholder approach. Yeah, we thought I was ambassador for, for asking what I had done when I was minister. But I was talking from experience. You can use law and order alone. You can use national security alone for the purposes of controlling small scale mining. It's not possible. Right. Elijah, thank, thank you very thank you very much. The, thank you so much for joining us. Um, very important made by the former Minister of Lands. So back in the studio here, I am with a research analyst, Mr. Edward. So let's wrap this up. Um, how do we salvage the situation as it is? What's the way forward? First of all, um, very typical of the politicians. What is comprehensive strategic way forward? He never said anything. These are the big English the politicians have always said. He also said. mentioned a tax force, like you mentioned earlier on. Yes, but we have said that, look, this tax force thing, both NDC and PP, they've always been doing, it doesn't mm. work. We have said that, look, give the power. That's what I'm telling you. The solution now is that let's decentralize the process. We've done a lot of these national, national, national things. It's not working. Right. Let's decentralize the process. Our suggestion is this. Look, we have mining committees existing. Tell the DCs and the police commanders. DC, if there's any galamse in your community, I'll sack you. Police commander, you either demote them or you sack them completely. Mm. Now, just let's give all the resources to them.
Okay. They are lacking resources. Let's give the drones to the district assemblies. Right. Let's give the military officers. Let's, you know, just give them to the districts. Let's not form them somewhere, sitting somewhere. Let's say post we should get them involved officers. in the process. Exactly, at the district. And the hold DC, them accountable as well. The DC will be very, very accountable because he knows that look, his job is on the line. Exactly. You understand? All and right. then in that case, you can hold somebody responsible. Absolutely. And then what we are suggesting new now is that we should make the media a part of all these committees. Mm. Let the media also periodically report on what they are seeing. Right. So that there will be open and by that case, everybody can follow what is Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. And of course, the media will do its job. Edward Okoku is the Director of Research and Policy at the uh, Atizana and Small Scale Mining Network.